Oh. Oh. Hey, friends. Hey, y'all. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just Brit. It's T, aka Risha Leo. And you're, and we here with another podcast on this late night. It is a late night because that's why it makes a perfect conversation that we're gonna have because it's late night, mm. and we mm. always talk about the good juicy stuff at night. That's when everything happens. That's true. Yeah, on the late right. night. So night we're, gonna, we're gonna let you crack it to that. Go ahead and get started with the conversation and let them know the topic for tonight. Okay. Okay. So this topic is going to be about attraction versus chemistry um, involving a relationship. So oops, I'm looking at the wrong. So what's the question? Mm-hmm. I know we got the topic, but what's the question that is, you know? So there's, I have a couple of different ones. And I think that um, I'm going to just read through them and then we'll like, you know, put our two cents in this, cool. um, each cool. question. So, you know. Um, many of us people have embarked on this journey called dating, you know, connecting with someone, um, you know, ultimately to feel like if they're our soulmate or counterpart or, you know, whatever. Um, while in this search, you know, we're genuinely looking for someone that is either, um, that we're attracted to, someone that, you know, we have similar interests to, really good chemistry. And um, so some of the questions that I came up with, you know, were revolving around the two, you know, attraction versus chemistry. So, you know, can you have a successful relationship or a healthy relationship with someone who you are only attracted to, but there's no real chemistry? And um, I think it's a good question because I don't know. Definitely a good question. I would have to say, like, the way that I'm thinking about it, or at least for myself, I'm generally attracted to someone that I have chemistry with. So I can't say that I'd be able to have a relationship successfully with someone who was only attractive in my eyes, but then we didn't really have anything else there. Facts. Because no matter how hard you... Not me saying facts, though, first of all. But no matter how hard you try, if it's just not given, like there's nothing, no sparks, no yeah. nothing, then it's just, you're just looking at a face right. that you know is attractive. Right. It's just like a pretty face. It's like, yeah. dang, is there anything in that brain of yours? There's only like, one thing you can do with a pretty face. But yeah. That, it's not you can take, be some nice, take some nice pictures. Oh, that's the route you were going with that. Yeah, sure. Nice pictures. But aside I mean, from you that, could sit on a pretty face. That's but, what I was saying. And then aside from that, it's worthless if you're not, you know, feeling the chemistry. Worthless, pointless. Yeah. I mean, sorry, so, the dynamic. I like the person. In case people didn't know, I'm going to define both um, attraction and chemistry. So, you know, attraction is basically the action or the power. Um, evoking the interest, the pleasure, or liking something or someone. And the chemistry gets a little bit more deep where it is the complex emotional and physiological interaction between two people, which, you know, connects the two. Um, And then one of the biggest misconceptions I think a lot of people have is that they mix the two up with like attraction and chemistry. And, you know, there are some people really think that, because they're attracted to somebody that there's some kind of chemistry there and it's not it's not it it's not, not it, it. Doc. <laughs> it's not it at all because it has to um, be mutual right like i agree chemistry. that it would have to be mutual like i mean there has to be something that's connecting the two um now that's not to say that you being attracted to someone that isn't like you connecting but at the same time it's only one thing so it's probably what's drawing you to that person. Obviously, it's the first thing that you see. But typically, I found myself to be attracted to some people that I didn't actually see myself physically attracted to them. But as t- I learned things about them and talking to them, like their personality and the chemistry we actually had, 
made them attractive, if that makes sense. Exactly. No, it definitely does. But then the relationship still didn't work because I wasn't really like physically attracted to them. So it's like they had all these other things. But you know what? It wasn't like it didn't end quickly. It did. It was something that later on I realized. Okay, so this is not going to work. But you know, I could really talk to that person, and like we had a lot of things in common. It was just like maybe it was just me I just couldn't get with the fact of certain things I'm like, eh, it's not gonna work but um so yeah there's that um so the other question that I had was um what if the chemistry that you had with the person was only sexual and you know can a sexual chemistry sustain having a healthy relationship um which is very, in my eyes, very similar to the question if you can just have a healthy relationship with someone that you're only attracted to. Um, If the chemistry that you have, like I do believe that you can have really good sexual chemistry with someone. Um, You can have really bad sex with someone that you have really good chemistry with. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that good sex should be the reason that you stay in a bad relationship or one where it's not good and toxic. I've seen lots of people have toxic relationships with people because the sex was good and that is a yeah. bad thing. Yep, yep, yep. Because <laughs> then there's another factor in there. Like, so, you know, um, the soul ties, if you believe in oh, it. Oh, yeah. Not you I in do particular, believe in but anyone listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's like different. Like, because it doesn't still guarantee that that's the love of your life, that's your soulmate, that's your twin flame, all that. Just because you have, um, you know, that connection, that's because you have sex. You know, the soul tie. Mm-hmm. It's like right. it's all not. It doesn't all equal each other. Right. And that's what people so. fail to see, and that's why they stay in toxic relationships forever, <laughs> forever, because they feel like it's bigger than you know than the sex but when you actually sit back and you look at it like what else do you have for yourself there's no real right. chemistry there's not you know whatever I'm not I didn't mean to cut you off go ahead no 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 that's um that's actually great I mean because when you know when you're sleeping with someone like um like aside from the actual act of sex, but just laying next to someone your body actually releases um oxytocin and it's something that it's like calming for for you and Mm -hmm. it's also sends off a different thing to you like you know for you like like if the relationship is only based on sex and you're laying next to a person that it's only for sex then you're getting close to someone that you don't really want to get close to Right. Like and you and you can't help how you're gonna feel because your body is releasing this chemical that you don't even realize that it's doing it. Like, um, I don't think a lot of people know that your body naturally releases this oxytocin that makes you wanna be with that person, um, in a sense. And makes them kind of clingy. Mm-hmm. We don't have time for clingy. <laughs> kind of clingy. <laughs> it's a little clingy, like we don't know. A little bit, a little bit. Like mm, you gotta go. Time to call your Uber. Whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was one of the really interesting um, questions that I had. Um, also, there, um, and I just touched on this just briefly. Um, can you have a healthy relationship with someone that you're not attracted to physically? Um, in the looks department but there is a really good connection between the two of you and the sex the sexual relationship is like there and I would say no (laughs) and that's just for me somebody else could be like I mean I've actually heard one say oh he's not that good looking but he loves me he takes care of me like I've actually heard women say things like that so for someone else that could work for them for me that doesn't work for me I feel like I have to be attracted to you some kind of way so you're saying someone that you have good sex with good chemistry but you're not physically attracted to Mm -hmm. yeah I feel like I could 
You could? Because I feel like, well, for me personally, the way my mind plays tricks on me, like, once the other two are, like, 100%, I kind of can see that person as attractive, if that makes sense. Now, you mean, like, but, like, obviously, but ugly, like, face, you know, like, the obvious sign, like, probably not, but basically, like, the person that average people wouldn't say is attractive. Mm -hmm. Like, something... My mind would trick me into... (laughs) You know, like there's something that you could probably overlook, like if the person's missing like a front tooth or something. Right. But they or... genuinely don't look bad, but once they well, open their mouth, it's kind of like, oh, you kind of look like a homeless man. Okay, well, I speak, you know, I'm not going to talk about the teeth, you know, I got a gap there and all that there. But Girl, I'm with teeth too, it's okay. Yeah, but I think it's the outside from the teeth. I mean, in general, like even facial features, like, okay, like basic. Now, I guess that's still putting a limitation on it. Like he got the Forrest Whitaker eye. <laughs> yeah, if you can make them feel good and the chemistry and all that is there. And what about there. deformities? Well, I haven't had no personal experience with that, but Neither I really do I. feel like I can't say yay yes, or nay. nay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because again, the two, I'm like a mind person. Like, you know, mind fuck me. Because that, that would be like the bigger win for me. Because I literally could trick somehow away, like, I can't even speak. But some way, my mind tricks itself, and then I can find the person attractive. Like, you never did that before, and then when you were done talking to that person, like, down the line, like, years later or a year later, you look back and like, damn, they were not as attractive as I thought they were. Yeah, all my exes. Damn. No, just kidding. That's why. But no, um, yeah, like, I I could... Yeah, 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 I could see that. Um, I wouldn't say deformities. Um, no, because I don't think that's not that's not a like an attraction. I don't like, even like, know that deformity. people would like. You know, I don't know. I don't want to bring them in because I don't feel like they're that's a fair category for them because that's not their fault. Well, some deformities, deformities are things that are deformed and you don't really know that they are. You know, like dimples is a deformity. Oh, that's true. Whittles yeah. and all that. You know, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. That's true. Okay. Um, yeah. Or, you know, one leg is longer than the other, so they walk with a limp. Something like that. That's what I meant. I didn't mean like, you know, like other kinds of deformities. So okay. I mean yeah. I, I meant like little things that could easily be overlooked but often aren't. Um so yeah. All right, well I'm gonna be fair. I think on as far as I went from that aspect just on whatever receded headline, which it did bother me a lot in my brain. But again, you you push past all that. But what um, about male pattern baldness? Like I mean if you're thirty Yeah and you have a receiving hairline and you're balding. But it's not their fault. It is genetics. It's, it's but they didn't genetics. choose their genetics. Like, I didn't choose to not have no forehead. I mean, I mean, if I can make the recommendation, if you just go bald, it'd just be like, okay, just let I it agree. go. Let it go. I agree. But if you are over 30 with a receiving hairline and you're still getting that joint edged up, <laughs> like and it just keeps going further and further back. You must stop right away. And whoever totally your the friends, whoever's your friend doesn't really like you. I'm done. They're not really your friend. Okay. All right. Mm. I'm done with that part. Yeah, um, yes. And with the ponytail. Or how about the one who has the really bad comb over? Like, oh my god. Mm. I can't tell you how many older men that I've seen that have, like you said, like the ponytail, yes. but there's like no hair in the middle. If they're just completely bald with and that little a ponytail piece. hanging, oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> annoying. It's like hanging on, and they don't be they don't be single either. They have a woman. Mm. That'd be funny. I'd be like, and that... she love her man and his ponytail. Mm-hmm. That goes to answer you right there. Mm-hmm. You, they can, you know, it could be overlooked. It could be overlooked, but it could probably also just be something that that person likes. Just like I said, like, I personally, if I wasn't in some kind of way physically attracted to you, while all those other things are checking off the boxes, like, I've tried it before. It's just something like, hey, like, I really want to like you. I really do. But there's something missing. And I don't know if I can just 
So did um, you not fall for like far as like was there chemistry there though? There was. There was. Oh. We had a lot in common. Um but there's a strong possibility that there was just aside from the physical attraction, um there was that little clinginess there, which is uh-huh. unattractive, which made the unattraction to the physical a lot more like ugh, you know so it was yeah. like the clinginess made me pick with things that probably really weren't a problem but it, I was just making things more of a problem because I was just getting like annoyed with the person but then it was like you know it was started out cool and then as I thought about it after we were in the relationship because we started out as friends I was like you know dang I think I think he was always clingy. And sometimes clingy starts out as clingy and turns into like dominance and controlling. And I don't like that either. Mm -hmm. So I can't be tamed. It's like, well, I'm not an animal. But, um, but yeah, no. So I think that was really what that was. I don't think that I've ever really, really, really dealt with somebody that I was truly, truly unattracted to, but had real chemistry with. Um, because I oh. felt like I felt like there's been times where I've dated guys that nobody thought was attractive, mm-hmm. but I mm-hmm. found so- mm-hmm. yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know the name. Um, yes. So yeah. Um, but yes. no, I don't think. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mm-hmm. guess it depends because I'm not like those other. I'm not like a type of a woman that if he had money, no matter whether he was attractive or not, that I would want him anymore because, like, it's just money. And if it's in you know a lot of men who have money who are not very attractive do try to buy your affection, and I don't like that either. Right. <laughs> And then That's it's like people do that. I can't sit and... attractive men who have money try to like disrespect women. Yep. Like, like you know, B, I got this money, so you better treat me like I'm a king. Yeah, I don't know about that, sir. Exactly. My pride won't let me. Yeah. No. No. That's just. Yeah. It's not for me. It's just like the self respect, like. I can make my own money. I'm like, I'm gonna spend my money before I'm gonna spend your money. I'm gonna save your money <laughs> and go out the country. But yeah. Um, oh, and then there was another one. Uh, just, okay. So, like, on a scale of 10, how important is um, sex when in a relationship or before? in the middle of like building a relationship so I know for some people who there's no sex before marriage this question is just out of the question like it's just there's nothing to answer and then for people who are celibate it's probably not a question um either Mm. (sighs) no that's for people in the world who are genuinely celibate (laughs) um but for somebody who But for people who do date and people who have sex while dating or they wait to have sex after there's a, you know, a title, like how important is is the sexual chemistry? Because you know how like when you really like somebody and like all the other stuff is there, everything else, you know, he looks good, he, you know, has a lot going for himself, he's a good person has a great credit score stuff like that um Mm -hmm. and um he treats your kids right um then he's just not that good in bed what's your answer mine Mm -hmm. i believe that a mature adult can take constructive criticism and that I feel like I can teach someone what I like. 
And if they're bad in one area, they generally can pick up really well in another area. So the two can kind of bounce themselves off. Like, you know, if the thing ain't slaying like it's supposed to slaying, but the tongue works well really well, we can pretty much work <laughs> this thing out here. Because I'm going to get what I need regardless. But if you are not working with, if you ain't slaying nothing and your mouth ain't doing nothing, then, uh, you know, I'm willing to talk to you about it and, you know, see if we can come to some kind of compromise here. Um, I think there's a way that we could work with that, but if that person's unwilling to work with it and if that person takes offense to you saying, hey, this is how I want you to, you know, pleasure me or not open to trying something new, then I, then it would not work. Right. Yeah. It's definitely a conversation that has to be had. Um, it doesn't need to be had before the first encounter. And honestly, I think the first time most people have sex with each other is usually a little awkward anyway. Because you're it trying, is. You're you're trying too hard to impress the person, but then some of the time there's, there's nerves and you know, things happen and you're trying to, like you said, you're trying to learn this person, you're trying to learn what they like and that's really something that you learn over a period of time. So, I think it's worth, it's worth teaching. Um, I know that there are some people that are like, I'm not teaching him if he don't know that he's never gonna know, like, nah, come on, like, be an adult. It's okay to tell somebody what you like, you know? Exactly. You like a finger in the butt, maybe two. Say that. Oh. <laughs> he might be with it. You never know. It's just, I mean, if you like toys and things like that, like, you know. Yeah, you'll learn real fast with a person, you know, for the most part. Like, if they're willing to explore, or if they, you know, cool mm-hmm. with what they do, which, yeah. I had a person like that. Mm. It's boring. No matter how much you try in mm. life, if you're willing to like do the same exact moves every single time, you got to grow up. You shouldn't even be having sex at this point. Because if you can't switch it up and you have a routine, you clock that shit like a, a daily routine. Like, like every moment. You know what I mean? Like, mm. all right, first we're going to do this. Then we're going to do that. And then boom, it's over. What the fuck? Right, like lights always out. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So look at that. I like lights out. Um, oh no, no. I mean, like, but you know, I. Mean, okay, I get what so, you yeah. mean. Like, like, it's not no switch. Oh, we always gonna have the lights out. You know, wear your little grandma dress, or um, don't wear nothing at all, or like I actually have heard that there are men that think that while laundry might look good at the time being, that it's pointless because they're just going to rip it off. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what are you doing putting this on? I'm just going to take it off. Yeah, it's it's called foreplay and it's called excitement. And then, you know, sometimes when I put this on, it's not just for you, it's for me too. Things like that. Like, But, I mean, sex is always fun when it's not a job and when it's actually something that you're doing it can be fun. It doesn't have to feel like work. And I think um, a lot of times what happens in relationships is that people get comfortable and complacent. So they do the same things all the time. And instead of doing something to spice things up, they let their fire dwindle or burn out because they get stuck in a routine. So, you know, maybe doing something different, you know, going on a date, you know, getting frisky in a car, Ooh, or you know, at the <clears throat> or at the dinner table. You know, when you're out to eat, you know, he like slides his hand underneath your dress. Okay, or, like, it's getting real late night. I say it is late night, <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. Like you know, keeping it spicy because that's the spice of life. You have to keep the intimacy, and it's not just about sex; it's also about intimacy, like building up to that moment, mm-hmm. so that. Like, I feel like when you're building up to the moment with someone that you've already had these moments with, then you already know what's coming, but the excitement to get you there is like, oh, yeah, I know this is going to be, like, the bomb.com. So, like, I don't know. I'm just talking because 
<laughs> I'm lonely right now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I'm just so thinking. Podcast like went left. It's like, nah, this mm-hmm. thing is horrible. You might need to edit that out because that's another I'm not, I'm gonna definitely keep that. I'm definitely not <laughs> editing that thing out at this point. That is hilarious. Um, yes. I'm funny. So, my answer would be I don't, I forgot the question. I'm ain't gonna hold Oh, the question, question was, it was um, on a scale of one to ten, how important it was um, sex in a relationship or, you know, or not. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely giving a a nine. A nine. All right, let me stop being real. It's a, it's a ten. You know, I, I was going to give percent. my number. So now that you said that, I would say that it's a six point five. Mm, yeah, I can't because after and a while, it's gonna be like you're gonna all right. That so I home, say like, six point five to say that again. You know the things that you do to build up to that moment. Like there's, there is foreplay. There's toys. But, like, but like, that wasn't a question though. The question was strictly like strictly okay, 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 okay. okay. The you know the be all whatever they call it. Okay, all right, all right. But, but I almost, but I also think like in my head, like that's all like involves the sex. So if it was straight sex, like straight P and P and B, then. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I thought that all went into it. Like you just said, I thought that was all in the same category. Straight P and V. I can't say you know, Then <laughs> I would like for it to be top tier at least an eight. Minimum eight. But we always strive to be great. So 10 is always where we want to be. But I would take a solid eight. Strong, very strong eight. Um, but if we're going to build up to the moment and we're going to involve other things like toys, foreplay, um, porn, I'm going to take a 6.5. Well, yeah, when you put it in subcategories like that, like I'm thinking all that was together in that moment, like far as a deal breaker with a person, like your sex life, your yeah, but intimate really just moments. Get but you want it like that with the house? Well, yeah, no, people do that. Yeah, like, because I wasn't thinking you meant like just solely like boom, boom, like how that would be. Because, yeah, all that has to be. If there's no beforehand, then obviously it's going to be trash. I don't know why men, some men think that's the thing where. I don't know why they think that either. It's very weird. Like, he yeah. just says, oh, I'm just going to pull my pee out and just stick it in this V and it's just going to get. Really it's just going to be it. Um, yeah. No, sir. Uh, Did you, you come? Come where? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta tune this old thing up. So, I'm like, oh. But yeah, you gotta warm her up, you know? Yeah. Like, you can be a cool. Because, you know, hot pockets don't start out hot. Okay? They start cold. In fact, they're frozen. So you gotta warm that thing up. (laughs) At least two minutes and maybe an additional 30 seconds after the two. I'm done with this. Real cream on the inside. (laughs) Yeah, no. We gotta go. We're going to have to end this here because I don't know if anyone the ever makes it to this part. Pray for, me. <laughs> Pray for me. Because it went real specific there. It really did. Two minutes and <laughs> 30 seconds. I'm done. That's only because I made a hot pocket the other day. Actually, I made it today for my daughter. And she hit me to the additional 30 seconds. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that's why I'm laughing because I definitely know about that, and that's why I'm like, girl, hilarious. Yes, but again, if anyone actually did make it to the end of this, you're a soldier. This is going almost thirty minutes at this point. I know. So So thank you for listening. Thank you, and stay tuned to more um podcasts. You know, this should be out on YouTube in the next couple days, next day or so. We'll strive for greatness. We're gonna strive for Friday. Friday, yeah. All right, yeah. By Friday, probably tomorrow though, because it's easy to do this. So, yeah. So stay tuned to that. Make sure you follow uh, T on her social media, which is Mm -hmm. and my Instagram is Leo underscore B A B E eighty (laughs) nine. And mine is J U S B R I T T underscore. I think. 
Don't quote me. Yes, it is. It's J-U-S-B-R-I-T-T. Perfect. And that's that on that. All right, y'all, we out. I mean, 2000. Done.